bienvenue, hello, and welcome to the beautiful Hector Arena here in Pictou, Nova Scotia. My name is Michael Petter. This is Petter Sports and Streaming. And this afternoon we have for you one of three games on our schedule here today. And it is the Northern Subway Selects of the Maritime Major Female Hockey League hosting the Edza East Moncton Subaru Rockets in Maritime Major Female Hockey League action. Before we go any further, we must take a moment to acknowledge that Hector Arena, the entire town of Picto, and the entire region covered by the Maritime Major Female Hockey League, which includes all of Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, and Prince Edward Island, all lie within the ancestral and unceded territory of Mi'kmaq. This game will be a couple of minutes behind schedule getting started. Very, very close to our scheduled start time of four o'clock. However, due to the uh, game prior to ours running a couple of minutes longer than expected, we are gonna be, like I say, a couple of minutes, pretty much dead on, but just a couple of minutes behind schedule getting this game going. Taking a closer look at these two teams in this game, the Northern Subway Selects currently sit in second place in the Maritime Major Female Hockey League. However, they have the best winning percentage out of any team in the league. Now you might be asking yourself, how does that work? Well, it's quite simple. The Western Flames out of Western New Brunswick have played five more games than the Northern Subway Selects. So with their record of 17 and five, they have accumulated 34 points so far this season, one more point than the Selects have. However, the Selects have only played 17 games while the Flames have played 22, and the Selects have 16 wins and a tie. Good for 33 points, second place right now, but again, one point back and five games in hand in the Maritime Major Female Hockey League standings. And why is that important? Well, quite simply, the Maritime Major Female Hockey League league champion is determined only by regular season record. So with the Flames having uh, 10 games left on their schedule and the Selects having 15 games left on theirs, the Selects are in a much favored position to get the regular season title. Of course, anybody who's followed this league for any length of time knows that once the regular season wraps up, the three different provinces separate into the Hockey Nova Scotia, Hockey New Brunswick, and Hockey PEI championship playdowns. The selects right now would be the number one seed. However, the Greenfoot Capitals feel like they might have something to say about that. The Caps are only two points back of the selects. The Caps are the only team to have put a blemish on the selects record in the regular season this year. That being the tie that we talked about with the selects being 16-0-1. So the Capitals two points back, but the Selects do have three games in hand on the Capitals. So again, they do still sit in that favored position of being the number one seed in Nova Scotia. Capitals right now sit in second. The Penguins just one point back of the Caps in third. And the Cape Breton Lynx sit in fourth among the four Nova Scotia based teams. When you look at the Newfoundland, or the, excuse me, the New Brunswick standings, the Flames sit in first with their 34 points. The Flames opponent, or the Selects opponents today, the Moncton Rockets, are second among New Brunswick teams with a record of 7, 12, and 1. They sit in sixth overall in the Maritime Major Female Hockey League standings. And the Kraken sit at 0-22 so far this year. They are in third place and will likely stay in third place. The Rockets mathematically could still catch the Flames for first, but they would need to pretty much win out in their last 10 games of the regular season and would need the Flames to have a pretty significant collapse in order for the Rockets to pass the Flames into first place amongst the New Brunswick teams and possibly be looking at first place overall. The other two teams that we haven't talked about, the Eastern Stars and the Western Wind, the two Prince Edward Island teams, right now the Stars are first amongst those two, fifth overall, the Wind sit in eighth overall, and 
uh, 19 points back of the Stars in the regular season standings. So it looks like the Stars will have home ice advantage in that Prince Edward Island Championship. Now, once we get the three winners of the three different provinces, those three teams will head to Newfoundland, Cornerbrook to be precise in early April, to take on the host team and the champions of Newfoundland Labrador for the Atlantic Championship, which will then determine who gets to go to Vernon, British Columbia for the SO Cup in 2024, which will be taking place later in April to determine the supremacy of U18 female hockey here in Canada. So that is where we stand coming into this game. The Flames one point ahead of the Selects. The Selects with a better overall winning percentage. And the Selects opponents today, the Mon Edza East Moncton Subaru Rockets sitting in sixth. Seven points behind the Stars, who are in fifth. 17 points behind the Flames, who again sit in first place, but the Selects with those games in hand. And speaking of the Western Flames, they are on the ice right now against the Western Wind, as it's Western Newfoundland or Western New Brunswick. Why do I keep wanting to say Newfoundland? Western New Brunswick taking on Western Prince Edward Island late in the first period. That game is tied at a goal apiece. One other game already underway today. They're into the second period between the Greenfoot Capitals and the Cape Breton Lynx. Capitals lead that game 3-0, again about midway through the second period. One other game later today, the Action Benefits Penguins will be ho uh, in Eastern Prince Edward Island to take on the Down East Auto Parts Stars of Eastern PEI. And then when you look ahead to tomorrow, the Penguins will stay on the island, but they'll go to the western part of the island to take on the Western Wind, while the Western Flames, who are at the Western Wind right now, will switch to the eastern side of the island to take on the Down East Auto Parts Stars. The Moncton, the Edza East Moncton, Ro uh, Moncton Subaru Rockets will stay here in Pictou County overnight tonight and will play at the Selects again tomorrow at 12 noon. And we will have that game for you here on Petter Sports and Streaming as well. And while the Cape Breton Lynx are down in the city to take on the Greenfoot Capitals today, they will stay in the city to play the Capitals tomorrow at 12.30. So the one team in the Maritime Major Female Hockey League not in action this weekend is the Fundy Kraken. As we see that the... Northern Subway selects out on the ice in their blue jerseys with the white trim and the gold numbers. They'll defend the net to your broadcast right for the first and third period. You see there the Edza East Moncton Subaru Rockets out on the ice for their warm-ups. Couple of lineup notes for the Edza East Moncton Subaru Rockets. They're only dressing one goalie today. Janelle Gallant, the only goaltender on the roster for today's game as she is playing without a backup for today's game. And as we, oh, camera panning too fast. I'll, unfortunately, there's not a whole lot I can do about that. If the play moves quickly back and forth from one end to the other, you will see that message throughout the course of the game. Georgia Burroughs taking first reps in warmup. That's usually an indication of who the starting goaltender will be. We'll uh, await confirmation of that once the game actually gets going. But as it stands right now, it appears that Georgia Burroughs would get the start in today's game. So with that in mind, let's take a closer look at your starting goaltenders for this game. We'll start with the Edza East Moncton Subaru Rockets. Janelle Gallant comes into this game with a league record of four and five, a 2.77 goals against average, and a 9.02 save percentage. At the other end of the ice, Georgia Burroughs comes in with a record of 10 wins and no losses, a goals against average of 0 0.86. 0 0.86 goals against average so far this season, and a stellar 962 save percentage. Out of her 10 wins, 
Four of them have been shutouts. Just once has she given up three goals in a game. And uh, three times she's given up. Let's see, once she's given up three goals in a game, that leaves six in the other six. Four of them are, or six in the other five. So she's given up two once and five, or one, five times. It has been an absolutely stellar start to the season. Well, we're beyond just saying start to the season. We're beyond the midway point for all of these teams. In fact, we're about the two-thirds point for many of these teams. For the selects, they've got a little bit of their, a little bit more of their season left as they have played 17 of the 32 regular season games that they have on their schedule so far. Delving a little deeper, the select, or the Rockets, in their 22 games played, we mentioned their record is 7-12 and 1, or 7-12 and 3. Seven wins, 12 losses, two ties and an overtime loss. So three games there, they earned one point. 71 goals scored in those 22 games, so a little better than three goals a game. 72 goals given up in three games, in 22 games. So again, a little bit more than three goals per game given up and a differential on the season of minus one through 22 games. So pretty much dead even there. For the selects, they've been winning their games with a blistering offense and a smothering defense. 109 goals scored in 17 games. You work that out, that's a little bit better than six goals per game. In fact, it's almost just a hair under six and a half. Meanwhile, they've been giving up as a team less than a goal per game this season. In regular season play, they've given up just 15 goals in 17 games. The most they've given up in a game is three. As a team, out of their 17 games, as a team, they have six shutouts. So those 15 goals that they've given up have come in just 11 games. One of those was a three. So that leaves 12 goals in the other 10 games, which means they gave up two twice and gave up one goal in eight of their 17 games. So you put that together, out of 14 of 17 games, they've given up one or fewer goals so far this season. Georgia Burroughs and her counterpart, Madeline Kerr, have been absolutely dominant in goal so far this season. We expect that this selects team is looking for a trip to Vernon, BC coming up in the spring. They're gonna need to do a few things to get there. The first step, the first objective is hopefully to be heading to the Atlantic Championships. And before they can do that, they have to set themselves into a position to be as highly seeded as possible going into the Nova Scotia playoffs by the time the regular season wraps up. So we're all just about ready to go here. Yeah, that's the one that, yeah. About three different sizes. Okay, so let's sure. try this one. That one looks good. Okay. Okay. All right, folks, just bear with me for a second here. I just got to check one thing. I'm going to be stopping the camera for just a second. Not that one, okay. Sorry, we're having an issue with one of our cords here, so we're just trying to see if we can fix it. This is the tiny one. Yeah, that's not the right size. So. That one's bigger. Nope. So it's, it's got to be, be 
that one. But if it's not working, then that means there's a good All right, we are underway here, folks. Well, we'll try this and we'll see if it works and hopefully it does. And if we start losing, if we lose it near the end of the game, I do apologize. We're having some, oh, there we go. Camera panning too fast, I know. All right, we are underway here at the Hector Arena. And hopefully things will work for us here. Rockets with the puck, played ahead to Richard. That should be Marissa Richard in particular. And I can confirm that it is indeed Burroughs in net for the selects. McLean with the puck, plays it down the wall. Intercepted there by Melanie Richard. And now passed ahead to Melissa Richard. And sent down into the select zone. Out of her net to play it, Burroughs Sets it up there for Karis Ross. Ross plays it ahead. Sent back into the select zone with 120 gone. Back to pick up the puck is Jean. Rayanne Jean nearly coughs up the puck to Melanie Richard. Now it's intercepted by Peltier as the selects tried to clear. Puck sent back down to the end boards, picked up there by Wesselus. And if I'm mispronouncing any names, I'll give you ways to send me corrections coming up shortly. And believe me when I say that I do not mispronounce names out of any ill will or any uh, intent to offend. Uh, going with the best pronunciations I can come up with. Sometimes I get a chance to talk to coaches prior to games and go over pronunciations. Sometimes I don't. This, unfortunately, is one of those days where I didn't. Poirier with the puck now. Trying to get it back into the select zone. Not able to do so. Play, now it does head in. With it is Fit. She'll play it off the wall up to B, uh, up to Duaron, or sorry, up to uh, Ross. And then a shot comes in and the save made by Burroughs and she'll hang on for a faceoff with 221 gone. We mentioned that you can get a hold of me if I'm getting names wrong or anything like that. There's three way, or two ways to do that. One is through uh, the app that we used to call Twitter, now known as X. The handle there is at Petter, P-E-T-T-E-R-P-C underscore sports. That's P-E-T-T-E-R-P-C underscore sports. You can also reach us through Facebook. Go to Facebook.com. Look for the page Petter Sports and Streaming. The and is an ampersand, not the word and. And send me a message through either of those two media, and I will check it out. Unfortunately, I'm not always able to check it out during the stream of play, but... Uh, if you send me a message, I will at least be able to look at it come intermission. So if I'm getting a name wrong, anything along those lines. As we got a delayed penalty coming up here against the Rockets. And with the Rockets touching the puck, we'll get the whistle blown. And trying to see who the referee's pointing at here. Slashing is the indication. And it appears it is number two, Lola Boutelier. Or sorry, that's 22. Joanna Bouchard. So Bouchard goes off for slashing with 3.03 gone in the first period. And the selects, who have been very dangerous on the power play this season, will get a chance to strike first here with the man advantage, or the player advantage, I should say, with Boudelier in the box for the slash. Power play goes to work. Dwaron with the puck at the line. Skates it along the line. Nearly loses it. Now it goes up into the air. Dwaron able to keep. Okay. So. All right. We'll have to see what we can figure out here. There's a shot blocked by Alain. Puck comes to the line, held in by Duaron. She'll play it across. Now to Williams. Williams with the shot. Save made. Puck goes up over the glass and out of play. We'll get a stoppage with 105 left in the penalty. 
and 16.02 remaining here in the first period. What is going on with this? Ah, that would explain it. That came unplugged. So maybe. Okay, 51 seconds now left in the penalty. 15.48 left to go here in the period. Down into the corner, Emerson McDonald on the puck. She's being watched there by Boudelier. Now with it is Ailey Glenn. Glenn tries a sharp angle shot. Boudelier with the block. Glenn back on it. Boudelier has, knocks it away, but it's gathered back in by the selects. Okay, skating it along the line there is Boyle. Boyle with the shot. It goes off of Beaton. And then gathered in by the Rockets and sent down the length of the ice. Back to pick up is Boyle. Boyle being, bo being bothered behind the net. Ross back to pick up. She plays it ahead. And out come the selects. Morrow with the pass over to Beaton and Beaton with the shot. The save made by Gallant, and Gallant holds on for a face-off. Penalty comes to an end, and the selects get the offensive zone face-off. I apologize for the camera work. I'm having some issues with the camera sitting the way I want it to sit right now. We'll work on it. Hopefully, we'll get these issues resolved. Puck comes all the way around the boards. Picked up there by Groundwater. Groundwater gets it out to center. Now LeBlanc plays it ahead. Here with it is Maya McDonald. She gets a shot off and the save made by Gallant. Holding on with 5.29 gone in the first period. Face off will be to the left of Gallant. Winning the draw is Glenn back to uh, I believe that was LeBlanc at the point. Yes, it was. Now the Rockets pick up, and out they come with Wesselis with the puck. It's not it, the, Her pass is knocked down. Now Poirier in amongst the battle right in front of the selects bench. Puck is played towards the line, and now coming the other way with it. Here comes McKinnon. Back to the line for Poirier. Poirier. Sends it to McKinnon in front of the net. McKinnon has it knocked off her stick. As they now battle along the near side wall, just inside the blue line. Puck is knocked away by Alain. Now trying to work herself free is Brooke Williams. Williams takes the puck behind the net. She'll change directions. Get the pass ahead to Morrow, and Morrow will play it out to center. Back to get it, Poirier. She'll play it across to her defense partner, Richard. That being Marissa Richard. Just about seven minutes gone here in the first period. Still no score. Melissa, or Melanie Richard with the steal. Now there's a battle. Melanie Richard comes away with the puck. She'll play it back to Boudelier, Boudelier able to get it ahead to Alain, Alain will bring it in across the blue line. Alain taken over to the wall by Beaton. Puck is worked free and Beaton changing directions as she saw her path behind the net was taken away. Beaton gets the pass ahead to McLean and McLean will carry forward. McLean with the shot, that goes off the skate of Boudelier. Off the end boards picked up by Peltier. Peltier plays it around to the near side. Now beaten, or sorry, that was Doiron. Sending it down towards the corner. They battle there. Puck is worked free. And brought ahead and out. 
That was Buckwald getting a pass across, but it looks like it's going to be an offside call against the Rockets with 12.06 left to go in the first period. And no score between the Rockets and the Northern Subway Selects here in the early going. Draw one by Moncton. Here's Poirier with the puck. She plays it ahead for Melissa Richard. Gets it into the zone, picked up quickly by the Selects. Fit sends it ahead to Murray, or Morrow, excuse me. Now Boyle up to Maya McDonald. Murray gets the puck out to center ice. Poirier will bring it back in. Poirier puts it off the end boards. Goes down, chases it herself, tries to get it to the front of the net. That'll be cleared away. Fit tries to use the boards to wrap it around the net, but it's knocked down. Now Boyle looking to work the puck loose as they battle in the corner. Unfortunately for our viewers, it's blocked by the stanchion here at my broadcast position. As I've mentioned a few times before, when Hector Arena was built 50 years ago, it is celebrating its 50th anniversary this season. Uh, it was certainly not built with uh, online streaming in mind because that was definitely not in anybody's thoughts as to what the future of hockey would hold. But I have to give Ronnie and the rest of the crew here at the Hector a lot of praise for the work that they've done to set up this position for me and make it as good as it possibly can be with the limitations of a building 50 years old. There's a save by Burroughs and hanging on for a face off is Georgia Burroughs with 925 gone here in the first period. Just want to make a quick note that during intermissions in today's game we are going to be turning the camera off uh, just for uh, to try and conserve the battery as we are having some issues with the power supply to this camera and unfortunately because we've got games going on over at the Pictou County Wellness Center at the same time I don't have a backup camera available to me today this camera is normally the backup camera and the last few times I've used it, everything's been fine, but just starting today and I haven't, I sent my wife to go and get more, to go buy a couple of power supply cords to see if we could get one to work. She bought three different ones. The only one that seems to have the right end on it still doesn't appear to be giving me power as the puck is dumped in. So if we do not, as the power, yeah, we're back in economy. So I got to remember to do that every little while. Nine and a half minutes left to go in the period. I sincerely apologize for the tech issues that we are having. If there were a way to avoid them, there's a shot by Groundwater and the save made by Burroughs. All right. Out of the net to play the puck there is Gallant. Yeah. 
Buckwald. Thank you very much to Mark Boudelier for sending me those pronunciations and for letting me know that Melanie and Marissa are both French and it is both for both of them. The pronunciation is the Richard, but they are not sisters. Thank you very much for, uh, for that. As we reach eight minutes left to go in the first period. Still looking for the first goal of this game. Here's Boudelier with the puck. Plays it, or Poirier rather with the puck, played it ahead. It was deflected right back to her. Then Poirier works it all the way down low into the corner. Poirier tries to center it, but nobody was there. And the puck is picked up by Glenn. Glenn able to get it ahead to Hallie Rose McLean. McLean in across the blue line, but the puck got away from her and Hughes sends it up the other way. Richard, that being Marissa Richard. But the puck is turned over now. Here comes a chance for Boyd and a save made by Gallant and Gallant will hold on for a face off with 724 left to go here in the first period. Selects 0 for 1 on the power play so far in this game. Selects have not yet taken a penalty so the Rockets still looking for their first power play opportunity of the game. Meanwhile, the puck is picked up by Peltier. Peltier takes it around behind the net, comes all the way up the wall to LeBlanc. LeBlanc with a shot. It gets beyond Gallant. Gallant, I think, thought that she had it. But Peltier got to it behind the net. Selects force a turnover. Trying to come out front is Murray, but the puck is knocked away from her. Now it's gathered in by Buckwald. Ahead to Francis. Francis tried to get it to groundwater. And the puck rolls far enough away from groundwater that Burroughs is able to find it, cover it up, and hang on for a faceoff with 6.51 left to go in the first period. There's a shot, Gallant makes yet another save. Now the puck gets just by Jean and out to center. Ross will come over and dump it right back into the, at the East Moncton Subaru Rocket Zone. Back to get it, there is Poirier. Poirier's pass goes off a couple of sticks and all the way down the ice. Come on, don't tell me that. Sorry, folks. This camera is just bound and determined not to cooperate with me today. <sighs> we'll do what we can here, folks. We may end up losing this stream partway through the game. So I apologize in advance. Here comes Duaron. Duaron with a couple of nice moves, but Poirier on the back check denies her from getting a shot away. Now Boyle with a shot from the line. Gallant steers that one aside. What a big play by Poirier to stop the league leading scorer from getting a shot off. Now here's Duaron with the puck. Plays it back to fit up at the line. Back down to Duaron. Duaron with a move, gets the shot away. That goes off the post. May have gone off of a player first, but it also rung off of iron. Now it comes out to center, dumped back in by Boyle. And that's going to be an icing call with 5.09 remaining here in the first period. Okay, so that part of the message isn't showing up there. Guys here, folks. Here's Emerson McDonald with a shot. That steered aside by Gallant. McDonald back on the puck in the corner, plays it up the wall to Beaton. Beaton back to the line. Shot taken by Boyle. That was knocked down in front. Now Beaton with a backhander. That goes wide. Puck comes around to the near side. Taking it back behind her net is Hughes. Hughes off the wall and out down the length of the ice. Going after it, Marissa Richard. And she and, oh. 
Richard went into the boards very awkwardly. They're going to call slashing. The good news is she's back up to her feet right away. And the Rockets will get their first power play of the game here with 4.23 remaining in the first period. Carly Boyle going off for slashing. And I've been getting into a little bit too much trouble lately for sharing my thoughts. So I'm not going to. And just like that, the power play is over as off of the faceoff, an interference call against the Rockets, Sophie Grenier. And so we'll play nearly two full minutes of four on four with just four seconds coming off the clock on that penalty. So a minute 56 of four on four, and then the selects will get their second power play of the game. It will last just four seconds at the other end. But in the meantime, both teams with a lot more open ice with which to work here in the latter stages of the first period. Here's Poirier with the puck in across the line. Drops it back. Melanie Richard, or Ma yes, Melanie Richard with a shot. McIntyre gets the puck all the way down the ice. Out of her net to play it is Gallant. She sets it there for Marissa Richard. Or no, that was Melanie Richard. Uh, apologies. At some point, I will get them right. Long lead pass broken up by McGraw. Now, I, I should ask. I've seen the name MCGRATH pronounced McGraw and McGrath. Uh, I believe, if I remember correctly, this uh, this particular player's family is a McGraw version of the name. But again, if I'm wrong, please do let me know. Pass up to Alain. Alain able to work the puck out to center ice. Poked off her stick there. But following up on the play is McKinnon. And McKinnon takes it down into the corner. Centering pass intended for Alain. Getting a stick on it, but not breaking it up completely there was Jean. Now 24 seconds left to go in the four on four. Alain down below the goal line. Alain taken down hard by Ross. And that, or by, yes, by Karis Ross. And so that's going to lead to a penalty interference against Ross with 14 seconds left in the four on four. So. The way it's going to work out, the uh, the Rockets will have a 14-second power play, then four seconds of four on four, and then they'll go on to what will technically be their third power play opportunity out of two penalties called, just because of the timing of the way these penalties have come so far here in these late stages of the first period. First penalty about to end in two, one. We're back to four on four. Next penalty about to end in two more seconds, but we'll get a stoppage before then as Georgia Burroughs makes the save and hangs on. So a brief amount of four on four left, and then the Rockets will go back to the power play for a minute and 42 seconds with 2.20 left to go here in the first period. So we're back to f we're back to the rocket power play now. We had those four seconds of four on four. Here's a steal by Beaton. There's a shot taken, steered away by Gallant. And Rockets on the power play. Well, minute 15 left in the man advantage. Minute 45 or so left to go here in the first period. Melanie Richard goes down 
after trying to get a shot away. Rockets back on the puck. Here's Poirier with it. Poirier to Melanie Richard. Down into the corner for the captain, Grenier. Back. That's stolen. And the selects are able to launch it down the ice. 44 seconds left in the power play. Again, during the intermission, we're going to turn off the camera uh, for at least a few minutes to see if we can figure out what's going on with this battery and with this power cord, try and find a solution, if at all humanly possible. Otherwise, we may end up, like I say, losing this broadcast in the first period or in the second period puck is cleared down the length of the ice 15 seconds left in the penalty under a minute left to go in the period out from behind her net with it is Boudelier Boudelier working up the ice in across the line still holding the puck shot fired Burroughs makes a save but out of the net out of the penalty box and now coming down here comes a chance for Lacey Boyd Boyd comes in and Gallant makes the big save. Give some credit to Boudelier on the back check to disrupt her. Maybe she wasn't quite as free and clear to get as good of a shot away as she might have otherwise hoped. Now here with the puck is Francis. She goes to drop it off. That's intercepted. And Boyd back on it. Here comes Boyd. Boyd coming in. She fires a shot. And it goes up over the crossbar. Puck comes all the way around out to center ice, and that's going to do it for the first period. Selects out, shoot the Rockets 15 to 9 in period number one. But no goals on either side, and so we'll go into the first inter intermission with the teams tied at 0 0. Again, we're going to shut the camera off here for a few minutes while we're in the intermission to see if we can figure out what is going on with the power bar, or the power cord, rather. So please be patient. I will have it turned back on before the second period starts. After one period of play, it is Edza East Mukta Subaru Rocket Zero, Northern Subway Select Zero. You're watching the Maritime Major Female Hockey League here on Petter Sports and Streaming through Atlantic Hockey Online, a division of AO Live.
second period, and it doesn't look anything has improved on the battery. I have no idea why it is not working, and I am so sorry, folks. We're probably going to get... <sighs> I'm hoping we're going to get half of the second period. And I am, again, so sorry. All right, as we're ready for the start of the second period here. Puck rolls right in onto Gallant right away and we'll get a stoppage with seven seconds gone. <sighs> As, um, yeah, I, I'm... Puck played ahead to Grenier. Grenier able to get around LeBlanc. Grenier coming in. Grenier with a shot. And LeBlanc, er, and Burroughs makes the save and hangs on for a faceoff. 23 seconds gone in the, in the period. We're going to try something when the battery dies to see if we can find a way to get a different audio source and do it basically like a radio broadcast from that point on. I know it's not ideal, but we're going to see what we can do, see if we can come up with something that will work for that. I don't know if it will work, but I'm trying to jerry-rig what I can with the technical issues that I am having here. Meanwhile, there's Gene trying to play the puck around. Comes out in front, chance for Vesalius. <sighs> and a save made by Gallant down at the other end while I don't know. Does that make a difference? No, that doesn't make a difference. So it's not that. It's not that. <sighs> um with the puck backing up with it pushes it ahead and it goes all the way down into the select zone but quickly turned back the other way by Boyle Boyle gets it ahead to Williams Williams has it knocked off her stick and Elaine picks it up plays it back to Poirier again Poirier coughs it up to Williams Williams steps in tries to get a shot away that's blocked now Boyd gets it over for Doiron. Doiron in the corner, cycles it down to Williams. Williams coming off the wall, gives to back to Doiron. Doiron taking it to the area below the goal line, then cuts back towards the wall, plays it to the line for Boyd, or for Boyle, excuse me. Boyle's shot is blocked by Alain. Puck comes out to center ice. Fit waiting for it there, dumps it right back in again. Galland out of the net to settle it for Poirier. Poirier tries to pass it ahead. That's knocked down by Maya or by uh, Boyle or Boyd. Now it comes up the wall. Emerson McDonald will play it back down behind the net. Chopping at it there is Boudelier. Poirier able to get to it. She'll flip it up out to center. Gathered up quickly by McIntyre and sent right back in across the blue line. Backing up with it. Boudelier plays it up the wall. It's intercepted there by Beaton. Beaton gets it down to McLean. Hallie Rose McLean. 
Loses the puck there. Played up the wall. Held in at the line by McIntyre. Now back down to McLean in the corner. McLean makes a move to come away from the corner. Now cycles it back down for Emerson McDonald. Around to Beaton. Beaton tries to get it to the front of the net. That's batted away by Buckwald. And out to center it comes. Three and a half minutes gone here in the third period, or second period, excuse me. McLean working it ahead. In across the line, McLean loses control of the puck and it rolls all the way down to Gallant and Gallant will cover it up and hang on for a faceoff. 3.38 gone here in the first, second period. Uh, can't remember if I mentioned this or not. Shots in the first were 15-9 for the selects. Shots overall now are 19-11 in favor of the host Northern Subway selects. Puck fired around the ball wall to the near side, picked up there by Grenier. Grenier works her way ahead. Grenier trying to get a pass through. It ends up coming back to Grenier. That shot gets blocked. Now played back to the line, just out of the reach of McGrath. And McGrath has to go back and get it. McGrath plays it across to Melanie Richard, or to uh, Peltier rather. That was a 19, not a 16. There's a shot save made off the shot by Reese Murray. Another attempt at a wraparound, but that ended up rolling all the way to the near boards. Now Peltier will fire it around the wall. Try to get it up to Wesselus. Picked up by Duaron. Here comes Duaron back up the other way. Duaron with a move. Duaron with a shot. Save made, rebound. Puck still loose. Picked up back to Duaron again. Trying to bring it out front. They still jam away at it. And finally, Gallant able to make the save and hang on. Some glorious chances there for the Northern Subway selects. But no dice. As Gallant making some big, big stops. <sighs> now gathering it up is McKinnon. <sighs> Just my computer falling, don't worry. Okay. Thanks, Brian. Yeah, don't worry about it. Just leave it. Just leave it, yeah. <sighs> All right, five minutes gone here in the second period. Hoping to get as much of this second period in as possible before we lose the camera. Hughes with the shot, partially blocked. And Boyle able to find it. Now Boyle gets it ahead for Glenn. Ailey Glenn working down the left or right wing. Puck is in behind the rocket net. Centering pass out in front for Beaton. There's a chance and Gallant comes up huge again. What a game that Janelle Gallant is having so far. Janelle Gallant has been incredible here in this hockey game so far. Now there's a puck that bounces off of a skate and rolls right to Burroughs, and Burroughs has to cover up and hang on with 5.46 gone here in the second period. Groundwater to... What if I, how do I change the mode? I think it's this button. I know that the quality of this broadcast is not what you have come to expect from Petter Sports and Streaming. And believe me, if there was a way, if I had a, a solution to fix it, I would. Meanwhile, Buckwald tries to make a pass across. That's knocked down by Kate Morrow. Here comes Morrow into the zone, drop pass, and Williams just misses far post. 
Now coming up the other way, pass for Wesselis off the stick of Melanie Richard. Gets beyond Wesselis, but chasing the puck down is Poirier. Or no, that was Wesselis. And the puck sent down the length of the ice back to get it is Poirier. Poirier trying to find some space. Plays it around to the near side. Grenier, the captain, trying to work past LeBlanc. Or uh, past uh, Ross, rather. Poirier now sends it around behind the net to McGrath. McGrath, long lead pass. Connects with Grenier, but Grenier not able to maintain control. And Ross goes back and picks up the puck along her end boards. 12.29 left to go, second period. Still looking for the first goal of this game. Puck goes in behind the net, picked up by Jean. Rayon Jean gets it ahead to Doiron. Kendall Doiron pass intended for Williams, broken up by Wesselis. Sent back the other way, and Jean will pick up in her own zone. Turns, plays it up the far side for, Le for Boyd, but Boyd has it stolen from her by McKinnon. Now in the corner, Jean back on it again. Tries to play it past uh, Peltier. And finally, with Boyd, the puck is worked past Peltier. Sent right in onto Gallant. Gallant sees that the selects are making a change, so keeps the puck in play. P quick pass ahead for Alain, but that's batted away by Boyle. And now here with the puck is Glenn. Ailey Glenn coming down the right way, or left wing. Glenn down into the corner, trying to come out of the corner, but loses the puck there as McKinnon was able to separate Glenn from the puck. Now it's brought out to center ice. Alain trying to work her way past Beaton. McKinnon comes over to help out, but the puck is knocked down by Boyle at the select blue line. Alain again trying to get away from Beaton, plays it back, and the Rockets find some room up the right wing side, but it's turned over in neutral ice again. Now here's Morrow, Kate Morrow in across the blue line. Morrow with a shot, blocker save made by Gallant. Puck steered to the far wall. Played up the boards, held in by Fit. She plays it down into the corner. Hughes behind the net for the Rockets, fires it around to the near side, stepping up. Boyle, Boyle with the shot, Murray, or Morrow rather, with the deflection. And the Rockets are able to bring it out, coming the other way. There's a chance for Francis, but again, a save made by Burroughs, and she'll hang on for a faceoff. Still no goals with 10.26 remaining here in the first, second period, second period. Both teams are, Rockets have had three power play opportunities just the way the timing of the penalties have gone, there have been two penalties called against each team, but the Rockets have had three separate power plays while the Selects have had one, just because of the way penalties ended up overlapping. Here's Poirier giving the puck to Groundwater. Groundwater working it down towards the corner. Has it knocked off her stick. Now here come the Selects. That is Lily LeBlanc with the puck. She'll fire it down. Comes off the end boards. Poirier picks up there. Poirier working, has it knocked off her stick by Williams, and it's sent back down into the rocket zone. Back behind her net with it, Boudelier plays it around to the near side. Now Boudelier picks up again. Boudelier carrying it up. Boudelier cutting to the left side. Now comes back up the boards to the middle of the ice, plays it across to the far side for McGrath. McGrath sends it down low. Puck is intercepted by Williams. She'll play it over into the corner where Duaron is able to pick up, give back to Williams, and Williams works her way ahead. Peltier now. Puck goes up into the air. Peltier can't find it, but Wesselis does. She fires a shot, steered into the corner by Burroughs as we're down to nine minutes left in the period. So we've passed the midway point. All right, we, we got you more than half of the game. We're doing okay. It's just the question is how much longer will this battery last? And again, I am apologizing in advance because I don't know when I'm going to actually end up losing you. So I want to make sure that, again, I will do what I can to try and maybe get it like an audio only 
stream for the remainder of the game if there's a way for me to do that. Um, not getting my hopes up though, unfortunately. Yeah, I don't know. 8.35 left to go, second period. Still looking for goal number selects she gets it over to McLean McLean with a shot she scores Haley Rose McLean with the goal and the selects open the scoring or Hallie Rose McLean excuse me Sorry, I'm just dealing with a message that I have to deal with right away. So there we go. Yeah, I know camera panning too fast. What? As that goal by McLean, Hallie Rose McLean, just trying to find the stats here. Boudelier now with the puck. Oh, that's not looking right there. Yeah. Too fast. Boudelier back on the puck. There's a shot save made by Burroughs yet again, as it is 1 0. As we get the announcement of Hallie Rose McLean's 20th goal, 33. 20th goal, 33rd point of the season. Ailey Glenn with the. Uh, so again, that's 30th goal, or sorry, 20th goal, 33rd point of the year for Hallie Rose McLean to give the selects the one nothing lead. Now playing with less than seven minutes left in the first period, second period. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry, folks. My, this is not one for the record books for me personally, that's for sure. Here's Dwaron with it now. <sighs> Dwaron to the front of the net, but that pass just out of the reach of the intended target of Lacey Boyd. Now coming the other way, here's Melanie Richard. Richard gets it over to Buckwald. Buckwald with a shot, that steered aside by Burroughs. Now we're gonna get a penalty against Richard as Melanie Richard took down a player in the corner just sit now is looking to see that it is Lexi McIntyre. Race for the puck. Boyd gets on it. Boyd in the corner trying to get away from Hughes. And as a Moncton, Edza East Moncton Subaru Rocket player touches the puck, we'll get the stoppage with 6.01 remaining here in the period. So that goal again, Hallie Rose McLean assisted by Ailey Glenn with 8.24 left to go in the period. So at 11.36 was the time of the goal. 8.30 or 8.24. Selects on the, on the power play, puck is launched down the ice. Uh, now here's Boyle with it. Boyle will bring it across the blue line. Drops it off for Glenn. Glenn has it knocked off her stick. And McKinnon able to launch it down the ice. 1.30 left to go in the penalty. Boyd, or Boyle with the puck as behind the play, as she made a pass ahead, Ailey Glenn ended up inadvertently running into an official. The ref was a little bit slow to get up. Taking a look, he's... Still looks to be in a little bit of discomfort. Puck cleared down the ice. No icing, of course, because the selects are on the power play and the Rockets who are on the kill were able to clear it down. Here's a pass across for our, for uh, Boyd. Yeah. 
And we're down to nearing camera. Williams with a shot that goes wide. Picked up by Doiron. Doiron steps up, still with the puck. Doiron fires a shot that goes wide, comes around the boards. LeBlanc not able to hold it on side. LeBlanc plays it across to the near, near boards. Williams brings it right back in across the blue line. Now Boyd tries to play it across. That pass broken up by Boudelier. LeBlanc on the near point. Gets it down towards the corner intended for McLean. McLean able to pick it up after she and Boudelier met in the corner. Just a couple seconds left in the power play. Wraparound attempt. That's cleared away. Boyd trying to get on the puck, but she's being watched by Mar Marissa Richard. How does it do? Oh, excuse me, folks. Sorry, I tried to hit the mute button on my microphone, but didn't get there quick enough. There's a shot for Williams, a save made. Puck comes to the line, Doiron with a shot, that's blocked. Now LeBlanc gets it back down to Williams. Williams can't get a shot away. Doiron able to get on the puck before it clears the zone. Under three and a half to go here, second period. I gotta say, the battery has lasted a little longer than I expected. There's a chance for Murray. Reese Murray with a great opportunity, but the save made by goaltender Janelle Gallant with 3.15 to go in the second period. Whoops. Oh, that can't be right. I don't know. All right. Here's Grenier with the puck. Grenier coming in. Grenier's shot is blocked. And the puck bounces to Reese Murray. Murray coming the other way. Two and a half minute or 2.53 left to go in the period. Murray's pass just out of the reach of Morrow. Now played around. So if we get to the end of this period, we'll uh, again, as they score! Audrey Poirier able to get the backhander past goaltender Georgia Burroughs, and it's now 1-1. Oops. 1-1 one, one the score here in the second period. The goal coming with 2.36 left in the period. As for Audrey Poirier, her fourth goal, 14th point of the season. Then there the Rockets are pressuring again, but Burroughs gets enough of it to cover it up and hang on for a faceoff. And are we getting a penalty called here? It looks like we're getting a penalty on each side. Roughing after the whistle on both number 17s. So both number 17s taking roughing after the whistle, that being Kirsten McKinnon and Carly Boyle. So McKinnon and Boyle, two each for roughing after the whistle at 17.38. Their coincidental penalties will carry us basically to the end of the period. As we'll get an offside against the Rockets. 2.15 left to go here in the second period. Fingers crossed that we can have the camera last that much longer. 1-1 one, one the score. The goals by Hallie Rose McLean and Audrey Poirier. McLean for the selects, her 20th. Poirier for the Rockets, her fifth, right? No, fourth. 
150 left to go in the period. Puck comes up the wall. LeBlanc able to turn it the other way to Glenn. Glenn across the line. We'll send it down low around the boards it goes. Hallie Rose McLean on it now. McLean steps away from the wall. McLean still with the puck. Now there's a chance for Dwaron and she scores! Kendall Dwaron with 90 seconds left in the period puts the selects back out in front. And for Dwaron, that is Sophie Grenier getting a goal, an assist on the goal by, uh, by Poirier, by the way. And as mentioned for Dwaron, that is goal number 24, point number 39 in game number 18 this season. 24 goals, 39 points in 18 games for Kendall Dwaron after scoring that goal with 90 seconds left in the second period to put the selects back out in front by a score of two to one. Williams gets the puck down into the Rocket zone, back to get it. There is Poirier. Poirier who has the goal for the Rockets with the scoreline now two to one. I should change that. Here we go, there, uh, home, there we go. As the puck comes down, Burroughs covers up with 48.6 seconds left. Looks like we will get this second period completed. Before my camera dies, we will shut off the camera again as soon as the second period comes to an end. See if we can get a little bit of camera life back for the third period. Fingers crossed. Maybe, maybe the power cord will give us enough power that even if the battery dies, we get enough power from the camera, from the cord to keep us going. We'll see. Pass up for Glenn. Glenn's got 34 seconds to work. Here comes Ailey Glenn. Glenn throwing it towards Hallie Rose McLean, but just a little bit out of her reach. Now, back up the other way. Puck goes out, comes back in. Now back out to center, 14 seconds left. Sent down, comes off the end boards. Back to get it is Hughes. Hughes with seven seconds left in the period. And we're gonna get a whistle and a penalty with three seconds left on the clock. Cross-checking is the indication. And it looks like it is Hallie Rose McLean who's gonna go off. So the power play, 3.1 seconds of the power play will come off here in the second period. And then these Rockets will have just about two full minutes of power play time in the third. To start the third, as off of the draw, puck comes to the near boards. And that will do it for period number two. Shots on goal in the second period, 16 by the selects, 13 by the Rockets. Two period total, 31-22 for the Northern Subway Selects. Again, we're gonna cut, shut the camera off and see how long we might have to work with for the third period, fingers crossed. Yeah, change the battery, I know. I would if I could. All right, we'll take a break, come back, get you ready for the third period, we hope, here on Maritime Major Female Hockey League action on Petter Sports and Streaming through Atlantic Hockey Online, a division of AO Live.
period. We're back for the third period. Hopefully, knock on wood, that the battery or that the uh, power cord will do what it needs to do to keep us going for this third period. We'll see. Meanwhile, let's reset with the selects leading at two to one. Going into the third period, the Rockets carry a minute and 57 seconds of power play time into that third period. And this a big power play chance for the Rockets to try to tie this game back up again. As the Selects theme of the last few weeks has been that they have not been quite as dominant offensively as they had been earlier in the season. But they're doing enough to keep getting the W's as their record is 16-0-1 as we talked about. But can they hold on here against an Edza East Moncton Subaru Rockets team that would certainly love to come in and take out the defending league Nova Scotia and Atlantic champions. Williams with the puck on the penalty kill, takes it out to center, dumps it back in. Now it comes to the line, Williams knocks it down again, but now it'll come out to center. Poirier has Williams steal it from her again, but now it's Grenier the captain, she'll play it back to Boudelier. Up for Poirier or for uh, Grenier rather, excuse me, my apologies. Grenier with the puck, tried to get a pass to Pelche. that was deflected, Pelche has to chase it down in neutral ice. Under a minute left to go in the power play. Grenier back on the puck. Grenier will bring it in across the blue line. Gives to Pelche, Pelche separated from the puck, it comes down to Wesselis. Wesselis takes it behind the net, sets it up there for Melanie Richard. Richard working up the wall, back to the line for McGrath. McGrath across to Pelche, back to Melanie Richard. She has the puck separated from her by Lily LeBlanc, and the selects are able to do enough to get it out to center ice. 23 seconds left to go in the penalty. Puck comes out to center, goes off a body, and is picked up by Brooke Williams. Williams has been out there for this entire third period so far. Minute 45 seconds, long shift for Williams. Williams now comes in, gets a backhander away. That's steered aside by Gallant. Don't know, we might be losing the signal here, folks. There's a shot by Marissa Rishar. That goes up into the glass. And coming out the other way, here's Alain with it now. Alain gets it across. Shot taken, Burrows the save as we are back to five on five. Two and a half minutes gone in the third period. So again, we're doing what we can and we very much appreciate that this is a bit of a challenging scenario here. There's a chance right in front off of the draw. Good opportunity there for Buchwald. Or sorry, that was, was it Buchwald? No, Groundwater won the draw, got the puck to Buchwald. Buchwald got to the front of the net and the save made by Burroughs. 2.40 gone in the third period. As we lose camera and then bring it back on, we'll keep this active for as long as we can. Here's Poirier back on it. Poirier takes a shot, save made by Burroughs. Poirier, of course, with the only goal for the Rockets so far in this game. Goals for the selects coming from McLean and Duaron. 
Here with the puck is Ailey Glenn. Glenn tried to get it over for McLean, but that was broken up. Boudelier on it. She'll poke it ahead. Now it's stolen back by McLean. McLean with a shot. Blocker save made by Gallant. Steered towards the near side corner. Three and a half minutes gone in the third period. Just a quick note as well. There won't be much of a pre of a post game for this one uh, as I have to hustle to get down to the Pictou County Wellness Center for a game that will be streaming on another platform. Uh, if I had my choice, I'd stream everything that I have on one platform, but I don't control some of the teams that I work for, which platform they use, as it's a contract that goes above their grade, but goes above my grade as well. But just so that you're aware, it'll be basically puck is, or horn sounds and sign off pretty much right away so that I can take off. But we will be back here tomorrow at noon for when these teams play each other again. Save made by uh, Gallant just as we lost the camera there for a second. 441 gone here in the period. I don't, like I said, we bought a new cord. We bought three new cords to see which one might work. So I don't know if it's, if the cord that we bought also doesn't work. I've also ordered a new cord coming later this week. Puck comes to the net, there's a chance, and Ailey Glenn able to tuck it in. The initial save made by Gallant, but Glenn had the rebound come right to her stick. Glenn will get her second point of the game, and it's now three to one. Fourteen forty-nine to go. Ailey Glenn gets the goal. For Ailey Glenn, her thirteenth goal, twenty-third point of the season. Again, that's 13th goal, 23rd point of the year for Ailey Glenn. Lacey Boyd with the lone assist on that goal at 5'11 to put the selects up by two. As the, I believe it's the U13 AAA Fundy Highland Stars warming up in the hallway just a bit behind me. I don't know if my microphone's picking them up or not. There's a shot save made. Second chance for McKinnon and another big save by Burroughs. Here's McLean with the puck. McLean fires it wide off the end boards, picked up by Boudelier. Boudelier has it knocked off her stick. Now Poyer working there against Morrow. Puck is poked to Alain. Elaine has it get away from her. Now fanning on an attempt to clear it is Boudelier. Elaine comes back, gets the puck, has it knocked off her stick by Morrow. Now Mer or, uh, Emerson McDonald with it heading down towards the corner as we near six and a half minutes gone in the third period. Morrow behind the net, tries to play it out front. It comes back to Morrow. Now to M Emerson McDonald. McDonald tries a sharp angle, saw the save made by Gallant as McDonald, McDonald and Morrow were out there together. That's Emerson wearing five, Maya wearing She missed, I just mentioned that it's McDonald, McDonald and Morrow out there together. That's Morrow with the puck. Emerson McDonald wearing five, Maya McDonald wearing 10. Penalty drawn, body checking is the indication and it looks like it's gonna go against the Rockets. 
So the selects will go back to the power play here with 12.58 remaining. And a chance to extend this 3-1 lead if the select power play can be successful here nearing the midway point of this third period. Williams wins the draw, plays it back to LeBlanc. To the wall for Williams, back to the line for Duaron. To Williams again, Williams has the puck knocked off her stick, clearing attempt, knocked down by Lily LeBlanc. Beautiful play by LeBlanc to knock down that puck and keep it on side. Now the puck is gathered in by Hughes. Hughes this time gets it by LeBlanc and out to center ice. And Duaron will back up with it to her own blue line. Now plays it ahead for McLean. McLean to Boyd. Boyd with the shot. Gallant the save and she'll hang on for the rebound. Or for the faceoff, excuse me. 128 remaining in the penalty. Is that an eight or that is an eight? 128 remaining in the penalty. 112 26 left in the third period. This game will get posted up to YouTube with all of its uh, cutoffs and everything else. So uh, we apologize again for that, but there's a chance for Williams, a second chance opportunity for Williams after Gallant made the initial save. She was still laid out, had no chance as Williams was left uncontested to pick up her own rebound and tuck it past the Moncton Rocket. Whoops, wrong button. That's the button I meant to hit. There we go. Brooke Williams getting the goal. That's her 11th goal, 31st point of the season. As the puck is dumped in to the, uh, the select zone, as they now lead it by three, the power play goal by Brooke Williams, her 11th goal and 31st point of the season in just her 16th game. She's one of only two players on the selects who haven't played in every game this year, Jenna Beaton being the other one. Beaton has missed two games. Williams has missed two games. Uh, we should mention as well, Je uh, Georgia Burroughs also missed two games, but as a goaltender, she probably, if she had been here, she would have only played in one of them anyway. So we are again back, at least. Knock on wood, we haven't been off air for any significant things yet. We've been able to catch it pretty quickly almost every time. Here's Fit with the puck now. Ella Fit moving her way ahead. Fit in across the line, but it's ruled an offside with 10.50 left to go here in the third period. Selects up by three now. As they look to remain undefeated on the season, not perfect on the year. And we should mention that when we say on the season, we're talking about the Maritime Major Female Hockey League season, not including all uh, tournament games or anything along those lines. We're only using Maritime Major Female Hockey League regular season games to talk about records as we don't have access to every single tournament game that teams play and whatnot. And that goes for players' individual stats as well. When we talk about, uh, like for example, the last goal by, uh, by Brooke Williams, and that being her 11th goal and 31st point on the year, that is just within regular season games. Here's Dwaron with the puck now. Kendall Dwaron coming in, cuts to the right side, fires a shot, it goes up into the glass. Puck comes up the wall to Boyd. Williams also in there. She gets tied up by Marissa Richard. And McKinnon able to get it ahead for Alain out at center ice. Alain works the puck past LeBlanc down into the select zone. McIntyre, long lead pass for McLean. 
who had just come on on a change. McLean trying to work herself into some open space. Gets a shot away. It goes off the shin pad of Pelche. Picked up behind the net by Beaton. Her pass out in front. Gathered in by Glenn. Glenn with a shot. Save. Rebound. Scored. Goal. But Ailey Glenn does get her second. and a half minutes left and I don't think <sighs> it's end point here all right we'll see what we can We got her back for a moment or two. We'll see how long we last. 8.40 left to go in the third period. Selects lead it by four. McLean gets another point as she gets an assist on that one. Now we're going to get another penalty against the Rockets. 